In this video, I'm gonna be sharpening a fine Japanese Ryoba saw. Not a super fine, but it's pretty fine. Certainly the finest saw I've ever sharpened. And the point of this video is really to show you that it's not that hard. And I'm just learning and I'm already getting the results that you're about to see. G'day, welcome to Chestnut Nag. My name is Stuart Chignall and this is my YouTube channel where I put all my videos about uh, natural building, woodwork, uh, a lot of the medieval stuff that I do, tool restoration, that sort of stuff. And so today we are sharpening this, a saw. Now in the last video that I published, I was in the process of making a set of screens and I uh, was finding that the saw that I was using wasn't performing as well as I would like. So I thought, mm, let's, it needs to sharpen. Now a lot of modern Japanese saws are impulse hardened and you can't sharpen them. And while I love those saws because they're so good and they stay sharp for so long and they're, they're brilliant and for what they are and the quality they are, they're incredibly cheap, which is one of the reasons why you know, I sell them. But personally, I don't like the idea that they're disposable. And I do love the idea of the handmade saws, which is why I have them and why I use them and why I am teaching myself to sharpen them. Saw sharpening, even Western saw sharpening, is one of those jobs that a lot of people find pretty intimidating. And I know I was that way until I had a go and found that I could get some pretty reasonable results. Before we get started with sharpening, what I thought I would do is I'm gonna time how long it takes me to do a cut and see if there's a significant improvement at the end of it. Start. Okay. Cross cut, there we go. Now just subjectively, the saw doesn't feel like it's cutting as fast as it should. Now this isn't super hard wood, it's only oak. And uh, red oak at that. Uh, uh, that's the corner cut. Stop. One minute. Well, that gives us a baseline. It's not incredibly scientific because I'm not doing, you know, well, my sample size is pretty small. One isn't a sample. But let's move on to sharpening the store. First thing, is do we need to joint the saw? Now, I reckon there are a couple of teeth there that aren't touching the wood, but I reckon it's pretty close. So I think we can, I think we can skip the jointing step and just go for a light sharpen. Just give it a little bit of a touch up, see if that works. Oh, but what do I, what do I mean by jointing the saw? Well, when you are, when you are sharpening multiple times, the sometimes you're going to take a little bit off different teeth at different points now little discrepancies aren't, aren't a problem but if the difference in tooth lengths gets too long what can happen is that the only the only the tall teeth are cutting only the longest teeth are cutting and the short ones aren't which isn't a problem what is a problem is when the tall teeth leave the cut they leave contact with the wood and then the saw drops down onto a short tooth. And when that happens, it can be very easy for the, um, for the saw to grab. And particularly with fine Japanese saws, that's when you break teeth. So as much as you can within reason, you wanna keep the teeth all the same length. Now, in practice, that means that you joint, not every time you sharpen, but regularly, depending upon how even you are with your sharpening of the teeth so that you don't create that unevenness in the tooth length in the first place. So I've got a selection of Japanese feather files here. These are for saw sharpening. Now this one here is for large saws. This is unsold stock. It's been, it's been in storage for a long time. This one's quite manky. Uh, so it's one of the ones I'm not selling. It's one of the ones I get to use myself because, well, that's what happens when you sell secondhand tools is you get to use the crap um, a lot of the time. Uh, so yeah, this is for your big uh, Maybeki, uh, your whale back ripping saws or your uh, Mado Nokogiri. There's the, 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 the big uh, cross cut saws, not for a fine saw like this. Now this is a 75 mil single cut feather file. This file is for uh, general sharpening but if you want a super fine finish, 
we have these double cut files. These are things that are as rare as hen's teeth. They came out of a box that a, you know, a carpenter had bought, and like sort of bought a whole box of them, thrown them in his toolbox, and then all well, never got around to using. But they're actually double cut, and I'll take a I'll take a macro shot just here to show you. Now these are for just touching up, or they're for removing the burr or giving a finer sharpen after you've used the single cut file. Much likely you'd use a coarse stone and then go to a fine stone if you were sharpening a chisel or a knife or something. I'm going to have a crack at using these two, I think, and see how we go with this saw. But first of all, we need handles for them. Um, and if you want to see how I put the handles on, well, I did a separate video on that. Now, I'm going to start off with the double cut file. Just to see how it feels. When I was doing the filing, the noise of the file on the saw didn't bother me, but now doing the edit, it's going straight through my skull. So no more file sounds unless I need them to for some editing video demonstration point. And I'm gonna do every second tooth, and these are the teeth that uh, where the set is leaning away from me. Okay. Now we turn it around. Do the other side. Now, that's the rip side done, and that's the easy side. The crosscut side is finer, and there it's, um, it's three angles instead of two. But it's, again, it's not that hard, and it's really just the same process, but you know, with more detail. Now I'm just including a little bit of footage of me sharpening the crosscut side, but this video really isn't a how-to video, it's an encouragement video, because really when it comes down to it, I've barely shown you the information on how to do the rip side, which is easier. What I have done though, is I'm including some links to some videos by Paul Sellers on how to sharpen Western saws, and yes, they're Western, not Japanese, but metal is metal, files are files, wood is wood, it's, it's the same whether they're Japanese, Western, doesn't matter. Once you get your head around that, remove some of the mysticism behind it, you can, I think, get a lot more encouragement that it's not that hard. Now, the geometry of the Japanese sawtooth is a little different, but it's still metal. Still, you've got to file it off. You've still got to sharpen it. You've still got to get two planes to come together where you want them together in a crisp edge, which gives you sharp. As I do more of these videos, I'm going to do some more videos which will be how to sharpen, specifically how to sharpen Japanese. Even though I've just said the techniques, it's kind of the same. But it's tricky to film, and therefore I'm gonna film it with uh, sharpening much larger saws, which is much easier for you guys to see what I'm doing, and it's much easier to film what I'm doing, and therefore teach you better. I'm gonna have to get a new stopwatch app for this sort of thing, because I can't find a way to make it stay on which is a little annoying cross cut to start oh yeah I can already feel that that is better uh, everything's better it feels better oh, I'm wandering off there sounds better Look 
look at how much faster that's cutting. I'm not cutting straight though. Right, that's done. 45 seconds. And I was mucking around because I wasn't cutting straight. Wow, all right, that is so cool. And the, the cross cut is working a lot better too. Although it does, it does feel, I haven't done as good enough, as good a job. But really, the main thing I want to get across with this video is it's not that hard. A little bit of practice, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of, you know, let's do it attitude gung ho and you'll be fine. Having said that though, it's going to take some practice and you're going to make some mistakes. So it's better that you, you have a go with a saw that's not incredibly valuable. But I am currently selling a whole stack of saws I got from a shop which was flooded and they all got water damaged. Now these are industrial made saws but they're, they're quite old. Um, they must have been sitting in the back room of the store that still got flooded and then they've done this big clean out because you know, some of them are you know, 20 plus years old and they're not impulse hardened, which means you can sharpen them. Now some of them are in very good condition, others mm, not so much. But for uh, you know, 20, 40, 50 dollars, you can get a saw that you can sharpen and practice on as distinct from a top quality blacksmith made one, which, you know, seriously, some of them are like hundreds, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars each. You don't want to be practicing on one of them. So, if that interests you, pop over to Chestnut Nag on eBay and you can check them out. However, I do offer my YouTube subscribers a discount if they order directly and not via eBay, because then we don't have to deal with all the eBay fees, particularly the eBay fee, which is the commission on the postage, which really drives me nuts. But anyway, hope this is useful. Hope it's encouraging. Uh, stay tuned for the next video in the series I'm doing on building the screens, which is what I stopped doing to sharpen this saw. And that'll be coming up soon. Catch you guys later. Oh, and look, look, I got some more thatching done.